This is my 1972 GMC Napco K5500. I've known about this truck for well over a decade, and it took me many tries before I was finally able to buy it and bring it home. So here's a little backstory on the big yellow Tonka truck you guys will always be seeing in the background and the forefront of some of these videos. This is how it sat for all those years out there on the old highway. You really couldn't even tell what it was from the road, but it just towered over everything else around it. Supposedly it ran and drove fine, but they had to park it due to a starter issue. More on that later. Once they finally told me they'd sell it, I went over there with Big Red, a pocket full of cash, and a big long strap for towing it home, and made sure to hurry, because I didn't want them to change their minds. After 10 years of being told no, I was stoked to finally hear yes. First pressure wash is always so satisfying. So at this point, we had the thing towed back to the shop on the other side of town. And this really was my first good look at the thing. All those years trying to buy it, him not wanting to sell, even let alone show it to a guy. One time I saw him at the gas station though and I asked him a few questions about it. He mentioned it was a Detroit diesel and automatic transmission. So for all those years, I just assumed he was right, you know, and I thought that was awesome. Made me want it even more. A factory diesel K5500. So now I finally got the thing in front of me, and I just bought it. Checking it out, I popped the hood. Well, it doesn't have Detroit. It's got something else. Here's what it's got. It's got a Toro Flow, a GMC-built V6 naturally aspirated diesel. And this one's the biggie. It's a 478 cubic inch. 7.8 liters for you boys across the pond. So I'd heard of these before, but I'd never seen one in person. This is my first time. And uh, it's not surprising as to why, because they did not make a lot of these things. Well, that little starter issue he had turned out to be a lot bigger issue for me. They took it off at some point to be rebuilt or replaced, and they lost the thing. So I didn't have a core to go off of. I got a few ones from the parts house, but they were all wrong. So I tried tracking down a core. After weeks of calling and many, many hours researching and learning about starters, I was finally able to track one down. I sent it to an electrical shop, had it rebuilt, put it in the truck, and 10 minutes later, we had the thing running. Gotta love a diesel for that. Sitting all those years and this thing didn't even care. It fired up on that 10 year old diesel fuel that was in it and ran like it never been shut off. At this point, I'm stoked to have this thing running. But that starter was something else, man. I mean, usually playing these trucks, I don't run into problems like that. That's true rarity. Usually when I'm playing with one, it's got a 350 or a big block, or maybe it's, maybe it's in line six truck. Anything you need for that thing to get it running or to fix it, it's down there at the parts store. 
you know, water pump, fuel pump, starter, whatever it be, they've got it in stock right there on the shelf. It's easy, it's figured out, it's cheap. This factory Toro Flow Allison truck, it's not like that. It's hard to find parts for it. The book doesn't even say this truck exists. In a way, it almost feels wrong to say it, playing with this truck almost feels like it's not even a GM product because it's not easy, it's hard, and it's expensive. But I decided not to care. I'm just gonna drive this thing like everything else I own and drive the wheels off of it. I even told the wife, hey, I got you a new grocery getter. She laughed, thought I was kidding. I'm not. <laughs> Here she is, first time behind the wheel of the Navco. Funny enough, it is very easy to drive. A smooth diesel power, automatic transmission, power steering. I've had half ton pickups. They're more of a chore to drive than this thing is. So here's a little backstory on how this thing ever even came to be. Aptos Fire District in California special ordered two of these trucks, brand new, for fighting fires on the beaches of California. They needed a special purpose-built machine that could handle the sand and rough terrain that was constantly presented to them. They ordered both of them with Napco four-wheel drive conversions. They then went to Howe to have the fire apparatus and the custom wide wheels with flotation tires added to each truck. Through some great Facebook fire apparatus groups, I was able to come up with all the information. Sadly though, this is the only picture I've been able to recover of the truck. I always knew it was a fire truck of some sorts, but its true origins were unknown until this point. I also learned it was eventually sold to another fire department in California, and then eventually it went to Westport Fire Department in Washington State. That's how it made it up here. It served a term there and eventually was sold to private hands. Passed around a half dozen times and it made its way to me. My truck is truck 3520. Its twin was truck 3521, as numbered by the fire department. 3521, its whereabouts are entirely unknown. It might be out there somewhere still, it might not. However though, I was able to figure out that the two trucks were the only two built in 1972 with a factory Napco conversion, as well as the diesel and Allison combination. One of two ever made. So I get my hands on this thing and what am I to do with it? I wanted all these years, used to be a fire truck, it's not anymore, the pump's gone, half the apparatus is gone. And I start thinking, I always kind of wanted to put a flatbed on it in my head before getting the thing and getting my hands on it. But the utility bed on it is just so cool looking and in such great shape. Well, now they have a shop specialized in building these trucks and I've always wanted a utility bed service truck. I thought, hell, what cooler than this thing? Let's build a shop truck out of it. First up was putting this thing on a diet. One of the first to go was the old water tank it had in the bed. It was rusty and huge and took up the entire bed space. I need somewhere to put some old rusty Chevy parts and that's where they're gonna go. Getting rid of that and the rest of the fire apparatus easily shed a thousand pounds off of this truck, but it still tips the scales at over 14,000 pounds. It's an absolute tank. I then began to modify the bed slightly. The passenger side had this giant chain box that one of the private owners had added to it at some point that was just ugly and scabbed on there. I cut that off, got it back to the base fire apparatus bed, and eventually I planned to put a crane on that side. It's still in the works, gotta find one that's the right size and will work for the truck. Changed all the fluids and had some new exhaust ran, three inch straight pipes all the way back to open it up. At this point, the thing was ready to go back to work. So I started daily driving it and using it to do everything. Fun to drive, and funny enough, it actually gets pretty decent fuel mileage. It averages around 13 miles to the gallon. Not bad considering its weight and size. It's 
for a pretty good tractor. He yanks around anything with these. It's pretty handy, honestly. I had my buddy Eric Thornton go over and touch up all the old pinstriping on the truck and add his own wherever he wanted to. I gave him free reign and he killed it. It added another level of character to this truck as if it needed any more. I love the work he did and every time I look at any of it, I smile. So I got it running good, I got it looking good, but there was still a problem and that was those 50 year old tires. So when it was new, those super singles are made for it they made them as a 19.5, and that was a common sizing back in the day, but the industry has kind of done away with it, besides some agriculture uses here and there. But any new ag tires I found, they're not speed rated, so they wouldn't work. I looked and looked, couldn't find any old casings or anything I could retread. I came to the conclusion that I was going to have to get new wheels, or make them. The only new wheels they make for that pattern, though, are just traditional dually wheels, you know, skinnies, two in the front, four in the back. And I just didn't want to do that with this truck. I think what made it look so cool was having those big old steamroller super singles on it all the way around. So this is where Reggie stepped in. And I told him, I said, hey, I want to build a set of steel wheels for this thing that look like old slot mags. He got on CAD, designed up some centers. We had centers cut out. We bought some blank 22.5 by 14 hoops. And with his ingenuity, skills, and tooling, and my um, help and financial perseverance, we built a custom set of wheels for this truck. It took a time and effort to make sure the wheels were rotatable. This is a challenge because of the dually axles. When dialing in the offset, you have to make sure it can work with both front and flip to the back and look right either which way and as even as possible looking down the side of the truck. Spin around. There's the money shot. <laughs> Building these wheels was a blast, and I couldn't have done it without Reggie. He absolutely killed it. The wheels were now ready for some color, so I called on a favor to an old friend, and he was happy to help. He lent his crew, his booth, and a helping hand himself in getting these wheels painted up. That's right, a Riddler builder painted the wheels for my old rusty shop truck. For treads, I went with Bridgestone L315s. These essentially are log truck or cement truck super single front tires. This was the chunkiest looking tread design I could find, as well as having good road manners and would fit well to the wheels and the truck. Here's a good little comparison of the old versus the new. You can see the old tires are a little bit smaller. They're only about 41 inches tall. The new ones, they're about a 42 and a half, but the wheels are noticeably bigger, especially when they're mounted on the truck. It's funny because to me, it looks even more like a toy truck now or a Tonka or Hot Wheels per se. It's just proportionately surprising. It almost kind of plays a trick on your eyes. Like, is that thing real? I might sound like I'm exaggerating, but I'm telling you, if you guys ever see this in person, I think you'll agree with me.
the thing drives so much better with the new wheels and tires. Reggie did a really good job, and the wheels are super true and straight. The thing has no vibrations, even at 60 miles an hour going down the highway. Stoked with how it all turned out. So that's the story of my GMC Napco K5500, or at least the story so far. The world's rarest 67 to 72 four-wheel drive found rotting in a field, resurrected, put back to work, and to be enjoyed for many miles and years to come. Hope you guys enjoyed the watch, and I appreciate your guys' support. More content on this rig soon.